Uh, here you can see us walking outside, and uh, as we mentioned before, Jerry Ross was about to become the first human to leave the planet seven times. Rex liked the kid that between him and Jerry before the flight, they had six flights worth of experience. <laughs> here you see a couple of strap-in pictures of both the flight deck and uh, the mid-deck uh, as we get ready for our uh, flight into space. Uh, here we are just before launch, about six seconds before launch, we fire up the uh, main engines. These are all Block 2s. It was the first uh, flight of uh, brand new engines for the orbiter. Once they're all uh, set to go, uh, we light the solid rocket boosters, and uh, once, then, once that happens, you know you're going flying. We'll show you a picture just in a second here of what it looks like inside the cockpit. You can see us shaking when the main engines are starting up for about six seconds, and then there's no doubt when the solids light there. <laughs> Just a few seconds later, uh, once we leave the pad, we do a right roll that heads us uh, in the correct course to go into space. And then once that's complete, all we do is just go up very quickly. And uh, when you glance out, I glanced out my window once here, and you could just see the Earth dropping away. It's an amazing sight. Uh, right about here, we're getting uh, pretty close to uh, throttling the main engines back for uh, our maximum dynamic pressure, uh, which is close to when we're going supersonic. You can see the uh, main engines uh, roaring away there with the solids going. And in this next view, what you'll see is you'll see some shock waves actually moving back and forth over the shuttle there as we're going supersonic. Then the uh, main engines throttle up, and they stay fully throttled up for the rest of launch. About two minutes in, the solids are used all their fuel, and uh, they drop off and actually parachute in and are recovered. And uh, now we're just on our main engines, and it's actually a tremendously smooth ride here uh, for about another six minutes uh, all the way to orbit. Our engines shut down right on time, and uh, we were in orbit. One of the first things we do when we get to orbit is open the payload bay doors, and uh, that obviously allows us access to our uh, docking port and the main payload, the S0, and it also allows us to cool our equipment. On flight day three, we had to do start our final rendezvous with the space station, so we did an ohms burner, orbiting maneuvering system, to uh, raise our altitude to about 250 miles. And you can see you can really feel it, and it uh, moves some stuff around. And uh, this is what it looks like on the flight deck. On the mid-deck, you hear a ohms burn, and then uh, you can see what happens when, uh, when that happens. And, uh, <laughs> You can see you have to grab things. Uh, on flight day three, we got ready to do the rendezvous, and it uh, truly is a team effort. Uh, the rendezvous is broken down basically into three phases. The first phase is done by uh, burns that are targeted by the ground, and that was one of the Ohms burn. And then uh, the rest of the burns are done basically based on uh, onboard sensors. Up in the right-hand corner there, you saw Rex working the, uh, the handheld laser to give us range and range rate as we uh, approach the International Space Station. This is a picture of the uh, shuttle from the ISS as we were leaving from underneath the uh, station and moving out in front of it. We actually do an approach from below, fly all the way out in front of the station, and then we back in. And this is what it looked like as we approached from in front, and you can see this right here is a docking module on the uh, International Space Station, and that's the target that we're trying to, uh, to dock to. This is what it looked like from the flight deck as we're getting ready to dock. You can see the uh, International Space Station coming down and we're about three feet away, and this is what it looked like from one of our cameras. The uh, orbiter's down here, and this is as we're getting ready uh, to, uh, to dock to the station. When we get within about three inches, we actually fire quite a few jets on the orbiter to make sure that we have good contact, and uh, I was very relieved that uh, the docking had gone well. That meant that we could uh, carry on with the rest of the mission. <laughs> And uh, at this point, uh, later that same day, we were able to open the hatches, and there you see both of the commanders, Yuri Franco of the expedition crew and Mike Bloomfield of our crew. And uh, we were the first faces these guys had seen in four months, so we got quite a welcome when we all uh, entered into the U.S. laboratory. We got right to work. One of our jobs was transferring equipment. You can see I'm not only holding a bag, but I have another bag between my knees, which makes transferring in space a little bit more efficient than uh, here on Earth. Uh, this view kind of gives you an idea, if you watch the lighting, of just how quickly a sunrise happens on orbit. And now uh, a view in full daylight. You can see the station arm pulling the S0 truss up out of the shuttle payload bay. And here we are in the, at the robotic workstation as we're doing that maneuver. Uh, you can see the five monitors there that are showing us five different camera views. And we used a number of different cameras to monitor the progress of S0 as we moved it around. This one is from the shuttle's robot arm elbow camera. And we also used the shuttle payload bay cameras 
uh, and this is one of the views that you're seeing here of S0 as we're moving it around and toward the install position. This view actually shows both robot arms and you can see that the shuttle arm is in motion in this picture. Sometimes the camera view can be a little bit distracting. You're trying to monitor the arm in S0, but there's a beautiful view of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aqaba and the Suez Canal and the Nile Delta behind it. And here we are moving uh, S0 into the position where we're going to start the final install onto the zenith side of the laboratory. Over here on the right is the claw that's going to close around the capture bar and provide the mechanical attachment. And this is the camera view we were using for the final alignment. We're trying to get these alignment bars right down the center of these V-guides right here. Dan Bursch was actually at the controls for that final install and did a great job. You can also see here at the robotics workstation a number of laptops, including one that shows us a bird's eye view of the station uh, provided by the Doug program. As you've heard, we did four spacewalks during the flight, and we'd like to take you through what a typical spacewalk would be like. These are, uh, this is the uh, space station's airlock. I'm opening the hatch on the first spacewalk, and if the children will watch, I'll wave to you right here. We uh, wear some uh, pretty neat hardware out there. It's a 300-pound uh, spacesuit. It's kind of its own little spaceship. And as you heard before, we actually have cameras on our heads as we do the spacewalks. It gives uh, the folks inside an opportunity to follow us and the folks on the ground. Sometimes what we do during a spacewalk is manually move something like that. And again, uh, Carl, Dan, Steve, and Ellen were inside using two robotic arms to work with us. And we're basically over their heads just outside the space station uh, wall right there. Sometimes we actually carry large objects. Uh, this is an example of Rex holding a 400-pound object that on the ground would be very difficult to move. But in space, you can see you can even take one hand off. And to your left, you get a nice view of the shuttle here. So he's moving this 400-pound object very easily and going to place it down on the United States lab. This is a view from inside the space shuttle, Jerry and Mike helping conduct the spacewalk. And basically at this point, Rex is right over their head outside that window. Uh, sometimes when we attach things to the uh, space station, we actually got to work together. A lot of times we were apart. This is a view from Rex's helmet camera uh, towards uh, me right there in the back, helping him attach something to the space station. Suits are very comfortable to work in, and uh, we really enjoyed it. Sometimes we do tasks like simply connecting electrical connectors. So here I am making an electrical connection. The gloves are much like working in ski mittens, though, so it makes it a little bit harder than doing it as if you were uh, using your bare hands. We also make uh, mechanical connections sometimes, so this is one of the struts you've heard us talk about. It will be attached to S0, and it not only requires some pushing, but also some special tools sometimes. And you'll see in the next view here a couple of those special tools. This is a power tool, much like you'd have in your home shop, except uh, specially manufactured for use in zero gravity in a vacuum of space. And this is Lee attaching it to a torque multiplier. That gives us five times multiplication factor to put the proper amount of uh, load onto that bolt to properly attach it to the station. It's another a great view of Lee as he was moving those keel fittings around to their stow location. Another one of his uh, dismal times where he's out there having to watch the beautiful world go by. We also took parts of the outside of the laboratory off and this is one of those MMOD shields that's being reinstalled by Steve and uh, Rex after they rewired the uh, the uh, connections for the station arm so that it will be able to operate off of the mobile transporter. As we told you, Steve Frick was the operator of the shuttle arm uh, during the flight, and in particular on EVA-3, we use that arm to position Steve down there to do that rewiring of the panel you just saw. This is a helmet camera view from uh, me on the last EVA, number four. A uh, great view of the underside of the station, uh, in particular down towards the uh, Russian components. Great view of the blackness of space and the curvature of the Earth there. And that light that you see in my left hand is something I'm getting ready to install onto the station. Now this view is showing you a wide view of me looking around and enjoying this ride on the end of the arm. And this is the view I was seeing out of my helmet mounted camera. You can see the orbiter down here. You can see this, uh, this uh, beam over here that I'm going to attach the light to and then take it off of the S0 and attach it back on the US node. Incredible views as uh, L1 and Dan and Carl were moving us around. This is the hardest part of an EVA, going back in at the end. Uh, incredible experiences out there, and uh, you, the time goes by very quickly, and it really is truly hard for a, a crew member to come back inside and, and have to 
no longer enjoy the views and the experience of being outside. So uh, Steve in the foreground and uh, Rex over here with a camera, me in a suit on the one wall and uh, Lee coming in from the completion of our last spacewalk and uh, there's a high five between myself and Lee. A uh, very satisfied feeling that everything went so well. And this is a picture of the uh, mobile transporter, the first railroad in space having its shakedown crews. And this will provide the basis for the robot arm to actually extend and build the rest of the space station in future missions. But here it's getting its initial crews. And we also have a lot of uh, pictures coming up of various activities inside of the space station. Here we're having a barbecue banquet that we had with the uh, space station crew members here in the shuttle, and you can see the Western motif with our bandanas. <laughs> and the favorite item that we had was the s'mores that uh, Mike made with uh, candy bars and marshmallows and tortillas. Those were great. <laughs> here you have a picture of me doing a shampoo with a uh, rinse-free uh, soap and water from the galley. And no hair dryers there. You dry your head with a uh, towel. And here Mike is using the exercise machine, the exercise bicycle. We also use this in preparation for our EVAs and to try to get some exercise. And here I am being the uh, chef for the day and I'm uh, pulling the various uh, food items out of the uh, galley and distributing to the rest of the crew. And there you can see Mike working on some uh, more tortillas. And finally, this is doing some uh, housework. Uh, this is using a vacuum cleaner, and you'll see it looks kind of similar to what you'd have at home. And you use that to uh, clean out the filters inside uh, the equipment that traps the, there's no gravity to help clean the air. So you, and he, here Steve is changing a Lyo cartridge. These cartridges remove the carbon dioxide from the air. They have to be changed several times a day so that the air remains uh, breathable. So he's uh, letting us stay alive there on the shuttle. And we will take a few minutes to uh, enjoy being in space. Here, Jerry's enjoying microgravity. And these were, you'll see a somersault coming up. There you go, Rex doing a somersault. And these were very nice to show to our families when we had our private video conference with our families. Uh, and here's uh, Steve Smith using a, a big ball of water. And you can see uh, water is the size of a tennis ball. It uh, has a big bubble inside it. You can see the amazing effects of surface tension. And there you can see a a uh, M&M got snagged by that big bubble. And finally, at the end of each day, we'd go to sleep, and you'd see us in the sleeping bag, uh, covering our eyes and, and getting some rest. Well, this is one of the sadder times of the mission also when we had to leave the space station. Uh, we'd done everything we'd come to do, and we were getting ready to undock and fly around. The last thing we do, obviously, is close the hatch. So we got the hatch closed, and then we sent everybody really to the flight deck, and we got ready to uh, do the undock. On the flight deck, we had uh, Mike and Ellen in the front handling all of the systems. Uh, I was in the back at the controls, and everyone else basically had a camera. And we all stayed real busy during the whole fly around. Uh, we had a lot of steps to go through before we managed to undock, and uh, we were just getting ready here. We were pretty close within just a couple minutes of separating from the station. That panel there, I have the controls of, controls the jets of the, uh, of the shuttle. This is a view of the centerline camera that we use to maintain our alignment, and you can see right at the moment of separation, we're starting to move away. And then here we have the view from uh, inside the uh, orbiter. This is really amazing because that uh, part of the station that's moving away is only about three feet or so from our face looking out the window, so it really is an amazing sight to watch it slip away so close to you. We moved out in darkness uh, and then got up to 450 feet and watched the sun come up. This is real-time view of the sun coming up on the station. Uh, we're looking from the orbiter and the sun's behind us, and as soon as the sun came up, we started to fly around. Once the, d once the sun does come up to where you can see it, though, it's blindingly bright in space, so we we're all wearing sunglasses, but even with that, it was kind of hard to look that way. This was a nice view the station got for us of the space shuttle with an empty payload bay now that S-Zero was up on the uh, space station. This is coming around the back side of the station. You can see S-Zero on the far side, and this is similar to the slide that we showed before the uh, presentation. Flight deck got kind of crowded there, but everybody's working. You can see Rex there with the handheld laser. Uh, Steve is on the right and Jerry's on the left. Both have different cameras. And uh, Mike just had to come up from the front to uh, take a look since he has no windows up there that he can see the station with. And I was somewhere on the floor in that view. <laughs> this was our last real view of the space station, right not long before the sun went down. You can see the S0 there and the beautiful golden arrays uh, just before the sun went down, and then we separated. And eventually it was uh, time to pack up and go home, so one of the first things we had to do was uh, close the payload bay doors. 
And uh, before we did that, we had cold soaked the orbiter uh, the night before so that it uh, stays at a cool, comfortable temperature uh, when it's time to come home. And you'll see us in this next photo. Uh, we're kind of uh, dressed appropriately because it is a little bit chilly there. We had some uh, extra clothes on. And like any uh, trip, you got to pack before you come home. And here's uh, Lee and Ellen packing a printer. And Jerry getting some stuff ready to go, closing some panels. And uh, one of the next things we had to do was uh, uh, get on our launch and entry suits. So we had to unstow those and uh, help people get their suits on, which is a little more difficult in zero G than it was uh, down here you know, on Earth. And uh, this is uh, Mike getting his suit on first, and Jerry and Steve are helping him out and trying to hold him down while he uh, while he gets it on. And uh, it uh, works pretty good. And then we got Steve in his suit and. Uh, me and Steve there are helping him get his harness on, his harness attaches to his parachute. And then once you get all the, the harness and suit on, then you can uh, strap them into their seats upstairs and then we get our seats on. Uh, this is a view out the overhead window as we were uh, re-entering the atmosphere and you can see the red light, the, uh, the plasma is coming off the tail of the orbiter as we uh, recontact the atmosphere. The entry in many ways is uh, even more dramatic than the launch into space. Uh, you got to take all that energy that you put into the orbiter and you got to take it all out and it comes out in the form of heat. And we made a big right uh, sweeping turn as we flew over KSC. And uh, you'll see the coastline coming into view here in a minute. This is what it looked like out of uh, Steve's window as we uh, aligned the orbiter up with the runway. It was a pretty neat feeling to roll out where the uh, computers told you to do. And you look down there, and lo and behold, the runway's there right where it's supposed to be. Um, we are coming down. You can see at an angle of about uh, 20 degrees. And we'll hold that angle of 20 degrees uh, descent angle until we get to about 2,000 feet. And then at 2,000 feet, we begin to pull the nose of the orbiter up to the horizon. And then as we pass through uh, 300 feet, Steve pushes a couple of buttons on the uh, forward part of the orbiter, and we get the gear coming down. It's always amazing to me, and I think it's a tribute to the technology that we can start this whole process for landing uh, half a world away. Literally, we start the burn someplace over Australia. And then as it turned out, uh, for this landing, we were able to touch down within about 100 feet of uh, the desired touchdown point. I think it's a real tribute to the, all the hard work that went into the mission. And then finally, we get the, uh, the drag chute out, and that uh, slows us down and lessens the load on the nose gear as we uh, roll out at, uh, at Kennedy Space Center. And uh, we were quite happy to be home after 11 days in space and uh, traveling about 4.5 million miles.